Hello everyone, welcome back to Let's Play Portal, the 1986 computer novel written by Rob Swigert. This is the Amiga version. We're now 14 sessions into playing, uh, stroke, uh, reading, stroke, experiencing this particular piece of software. So if you'd like to know what's been going on in the story before now, I do suggest checking out the playlist of previous episodes. Um, and if you have any questions, then please do drop them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. But for now, let's uh, carry on. Um, we'll do our usual process of working through each row, uh, left to right, top to bottom, looking for new pieces of information to unlock. Here we go, we've got combat field medicine, which doesn't bode well, I would say. Um, we did leave our characters in something of a martial situation last we saw them. So let's find out what's happening here. We may we may get an illustrative image. That would be no, it's just a it's just a data crystal for anyone. Oh well. Okay, so this is Med Ten Combat Field Medicine. Combat equipment for ENC troopers after 2063 included full body armor with tactical battle communications equipment built in. Telltales calibrated to command retinal patterns track the relative locations of all appropriate troops. The standard issue body armour included full medkit facilities connected to personal monitors. Most important among the facilities were drug paralysis field generators and injection ampules for severe but non-lethal trauma. Such equipment could operate at the millisecond level to counteract the equally rapid effects of anticipated enemy NP fire or explosive compression. Injured troopers would be held in stasis until appropriate medical attention could be applied. So that sounds like something that the uh, uh, invading army would have, but not necessarily Peter DeVore, uh, Antarcticans or other associates. So that's good. I don't really, I'm not really invested in the story of the uh, the troopers who are coming to uh, uh, to to um, invade Antarctica or uh, take Peter DeVore prisoner. That's not really. Not really where any of my sympathies lie, to be honest. Um, but good to know. Right, let's have a look. Is there anything in Silink this time? Just uh, crack in here for me, would you, Homer? Nope, nothing there this time. Let's try Cytec. No, that would jump us to the most recent entry if anything had unlocked, so it's nothing there at the moment. Try history. Anything going on? No, nothing going on there right now. Okay, well, now, and it seems like now would be a good time for more military information to unlock, given the context of what, just, yeah, just, just hack us in here, would you? Uh, what's going on at the moment, so, with luck here, okay, there's a battle map. So this should really have an illustration, should there? Let's have a look. No, no, it's classified, sorry, it's classified. Battle map. ENC battle map capabilities included rapid readout coding, parentheses, which of necessity included injected, induced and implant conditioning, end parentheses, for tactical battle commanders. 2D maps convey little of the richness of information and data analysis, a full-scale battle map viewed by a well-trained and fully structured ENC troop non-commissioned field commander offers. That was a long sentence. Neural step boosting, retinal spatial data processing, Occipital holographic induction and tailored DNA-driven pattern recognition improvements all augmented the officer's judge judgment and the speed of his decision processing. Um, so it's, yeah, something like uh, video playback for sports. Is that is that what I should take from this? Okay, field communications, also classified, maybe?
also classified, but in a different colour. That was nice. ENC field officers were equipped with command retinal pattern and individually keyed tactical battle communications equipment. Telltales, calibrated to the officer's command retinal patterns, could track the relative locations of all troops under his command or report to the next level up in group or individual modes. Body armor helmet heads up projectors sent subliminal telltale messages on each member of the command. On to each member of the command? Telltales could change colour, frequency or shape to provide first level data on the trooper's status, combat readiness, personal monitor status, medical and cortical condition, as well as a variety of equipment and armaments appraisals. In turn, vocal, subvocal, telemetry, or in special cases, mind link instructions, could be relayed to individual troopers by name, number, or DNA de designation. Okay, that's that was military. Thanks for thank you for turning up, military. Oh, we're back to the life support. We're back to our long list of supporting characters, some of whom haven't actually. Well, I think they were mentioned once in a long list, weren't they? That's why they're here. But uh, I did write down, to help me remember, we are up to a Winders Fong. So let's find out about Winders. Winders Fong, assigned male, born the 21st of May 2052 in Springfield. Let's have a look at Winders' blood pressure. First of all, there we go. We will get up the temperature chart here. There. Uh, respiratory and GSR. There. Heart rate and EEG. Go. Tension. Escalating. Uh, DNA and hormones. There you go. Pretty level. Neurotransmitters. There we go, one high, one low, and the glycogen M. There we go, a range there. Lovely, so that's um, that's got us this section for, for windows. So, uh, check geography, see if there is anything there. There is not. What's that? Right, where is this Windows? Okay. So we're going to get some more of Windows uh, personal information and personal evaluation. So this is the family tree. So uh, Winders is the child of Belinda and Arnold Fong. Arnold Fong is the child of Lucy Fong and Raz Fong. Belinda Fong is the child of Shem Ito and Yolanda Ito. Okay, and there are the... Uh, I've forgotten the words now. Uh, physiology and ESP, that's what those were. Uh, basic core IQ stats are as follows. That particular selection, we'll see that category again with uh, different, some slightly different stats in very soon as we come to psychology. So we will find windows here. Wait for that to load in, and then we will have a look at the emotional uh, assessment there, and we'll have a look at personal growth. There we are, and uh, another basic core IQ set. There. Okay. Next up we have central processing, where, if we're very lucky, we might get uh, some backdated report from somewhere. 
Indeed, we've got two of them. Upload life support file C stroke three two seven eight seven nine one. Um, might get an image. Oh, we do. Let's have a look at that. Anger and fear. I think. <laughs> I think there's a graph showing us somebody's anger and fear. Interesting. Okay. Download life support. Parentheses. Mill data secured. File C stroke three two seven eight seven nine one. Parentheses don't end, which is interesting. Okay. Raken, Corporal, ENC. Time scale, 0 to 17 milliseconds. Note spike in anxiety complex at 6.2 milliseconds and small fear peak at 7.6. Note onset of drug paralysis at 15.8 milliseconds. 16.9 milliseconds stasis is achieved. Explosion concussion, inner rear disruption, um, meningeal shock indicated. Uh, I hope that's how you say that word. Uh, okay, so something happened to Raikin. Okay, and this is this is uh, simply titled up, "Upload Life Support File." But this is C stroke one two seven eight one three six. Wonder what image this will have. Oh, this one's just classified, straight up classified. Okay. Um. Okay, so this is yeah, down life support, open parentheses, mill data secured, file C stroke one two seven eight one three six, no end parentheses. Martin, Corporal ENC, time scale zero to one point six five seconds, note sharp spike in anxiety complex at one five four point two milliseconds, subject suffered extreme vertebral trauma after firing weapon, cause of death determined to be extreme dislocation and fracture of C three to C seven vertebra. The subsequent severing of the spinal cord. Telltale is down at 1.65 seconds. So that, uh, I think, is the... Yeah, that's that's the soldier who was stabbed by Peter uh, at the end of both the last episode and the episode before for uh, circuitous narrative reasons. Okay, so that's all of that. So we have hopefully shaken enough loose from the tree to get a little bit more story out of Hamer. Before we get there, let's have a look at Windows Fong's final set of uh, assessments here. So we've got the, the third and final basic core IQ set. Slightly different range of, uh, I guess, interests or uh, what would be the word? Accomplishments? Um, there we go. Here are the logic uh, assessments and evaluation of Windows memory and then social adjustment. There we go. And then, if we're very, very lucky, we'll get a little bit more story from Homer. Oh, okay, so it's backdated one section there. Um, E.H. Is E.H. our deep voice soldier? I suspect it is. Okay. I mean, I, I want the Peter Devore stuff. But that's uh, that's what's actually going to move this story forward, because that's who we're trying to find out about. Okay, never mind. Back, back with the ENC soldiers, I think. The explosion at the entry had killed three of his men outright. Corporal Rakin was seriously injured, and lay now in drug paralysis waiting for the medics, coming up the slope from the second APC. Hoskins was cursing slowly and steadily under his breath while he waited. The others were staring around them stupidly, shocked by the violence of the explosion. It wouldn't have happened if we hadn't used the strips, Den said. They set it to detect explosions, and are real careful about property. How do you know? Hoskins asked harshly. I saw it in a briefing hollow, Dens said defensively. Hoskins leaned around the corner of the now shattered doorway and looked in. Smoke still swirled inside until it got close to the outside, where the wind sucked it out in long streamers. His augmented vision mask failed to penetrate the turbulent gloom inside. 
The medics are here, Den said. Good. Hoskins saw them carrying Raken off. Okay, he said. Let's get going. They plunged into the smoke inside Mount Erebus. Okay. So that was... So that was before... So that was another unnecessary... Oh, the unnecessary details that go before things that we've already read that don't progress the action or the themes or, or anything particularly are quite frustrating. But we do have a Regent Sable entry, so let's see what Regent's up to. Two regiments have made it onto the island, Commander Organo reported. 1,600 men. I fear we're losing our momentum, however, Commander. Driving around in circles tends to blunt the force of one's attack. Sable had grown increasingly sarcastic, a serious sign of his frustration. All we need is another hour, Protector, and all twenty will be ashore. They won't be able to stop us then. I wouldn't count on another hour, Commander. That noise is getting louder. The shaking is getting worse. They're doing something to the ice. Whatever you say, Protector. Organo ordered increased speed. Okay. Um, and then... More... Soldier stuff? Hoskin saw Martin's telltale change colour, and immediately signalled a change in direction toward his last position. His squad had fallen into the new formation and started forward through the smoke when all hell broke loose. Peter swept through, turning, leaping, kicking swiftly from unexpected angles, and when he was gone, a few seconds later, Hoskins had three more telltales change colour, and two men with broken arms. He called for a regrouping. Who the hell was that? Dens asked, picking himself off the floor. I don't know, but he's gone. We'd better change direction. We have to make it to the shaft. Hoskins chose another direction and led them off. Okay. So, I mean, that moved us forward a millimetre or so, I suppose. L.S. Who is L.S.? Larin, I think. Sergeant Skate stood behind a doorway, waiting. He'd heard a voice. He was sure of it. He controlled his breathing, waiting. There was no further sound. Finally, he decided. He swung around the door, weapon aimed. The room appeared deserted. He went in. Welcome to the Recreational Centre, Level 4, a soft female voice said. Please state your exercise preference. Skate lowered his weapon and grinned. There was no one in the room. Excuse me, a voice behind him said politely. I'll take that if you don't mind. We really don't want weapons inside, they're dangerous. The ant was smiling pleasantly. Skate considered trying to shoot him, but for some reason found himself handing his weapon over. Much better, the ant agreed. He shook his head ruefully. You people have caused a tremendous amount of damage, not to mention all the excitement, but it's all over now. Please come with me. He led the way. Sergeant Skate followed meekly. Okay, uh, so that was Lieutenant Skate was LS, apparently. So, great. I, it's always good to have a, a new character pop up. Um, right, okay, we've got some more. I will just take a sip of a uh, drink and then we'll read uh, EH's next adventure. Everywhere Hoskins went, he and his men found nothing but empty corridors, deserted rooms, locked storerooms that yielded nothing when broken into. The refectories appeared to be abandoned. The workshops and laboratories were shut down. None of the computer interfaces worked, even with his best assault programmers working together on them. I have a feeling they're simply tracking us. They aren't attacking. They won't ambush us. This is their turf. We ought to be able to take them. Our equipment is as good as theirs. Our computer links are better. How can they empty out rooms in front of us and close in behind? Maybe they really are gone, Dens offered. Maybe that guy that attacked us was the last out. Maybe they knew we were coming. Maybe, maybe. Shut up, Dens. Our mission is to find a group of people. Two are most important, Peter DeVore and that guy Mentor. 
measured be in longevity, so he won't move. We find longevity, we'll find the rest. We're going to spread out. They may be able to avoid us if we're all in a group, but they won't be able to dodge all of us moving around at random. You all know what longevity looks like. You find it, you call. Otherwise, shut up. A team per level. Go to your level and spread out. If anyone's in here, we'll find him. Take prisoners. Keep looking until someone calls. Move out. Okay, and then... Well, uh, what's Peter up to? Peter DeVore and Thatcher, I think, is, uh, is what this pertains to. Peter returned to the chamber. Laren was sitting beside Beth Rain, holding her head. When Peter lifted his mask, she looked up. She's been hit, she said. He nodded. They're using killers, Thatcher said. I know, Peter replied, but she's alive, so his aim was probably off. They'd want us alive, so it was probably a mistake. Beth Rain twitched spasmodically as the myelin sheathing of her central nervous system shorted. Her body began shaking violently. Is she going to die? Laren asked. She was holding Beth Rain's temples between her palms, as if she could force the calming energy of her own, mal own functioning nervous system into Beth Rain's damaged one. Suddenly the woman's eyes opened. Cold, she said, shaking. What? What did you say? Peter leaned down. Cold, she repeated. I feel so cold. I haven't felt so cold, not since we got restructured. Why? Peter leaned back, squatting on his heels. He smiled. She feels cold, he said. Of course she's cold, Laren flared. She's been hit. She's going to be another da another yam, damn you. Peter shook his head. No, he said. Their killers won't kill. It's the new tissue. They didn't take it into account. Our new fat layer. Ants won't die, not so easily. They just don't know how tough we are now. With nerve growth factor treatment, she'll be all right. Where's she going to get that? Laren demanded. We're going outside, Peter. We won't have NGF facilities. You said we were going to Terminus. We don't even know if Terminus really exists. Thatcher came forward. We'll stay, he said. You won't need us. We'll take Beth Rain back. Peter nodded. Tithus looked disappointed. Peter touched his head briefly. We'll be back, he said. We'll get you when we find Terminus and take you there. Tithus nodded but said nothing. Thatcher and Laird lifted Beth Rain and carried her from the room. Okay, Peter said. We're on our way. Great. I've kind of been waiting for you to get on your way for ooh, quite a few hours, so... That would that would be nice. That'd be expedient. All right. Well, that was that was something, wasn't it? it was better better than nothing. All right. We'll do the usual one more round for this episode. So let's have a look at Med Ten. Nothing there. Silink. Nothing. Not the most encouraging start. Sci tech, however, might have something for us. Low frequency radar, that's exactly what I was looking for. Might even have an image as well. Let's have a look. Oh, uh, yeah, there you go. Low frequency radar, something there. General science and technology information. Current entry, low frequency radar, parentheses, nav, stroke, com, in parentheses, Rif Antarctic extrapolation, CP, stroke, SciTech, AI. Intercorp Elite Neutralization Corps maintained the sophisticated technology of low frequency radar for navigation and communications in both assault cycle transport and LM APCs. Outside of the military DB, uh, parentheses, DNA code required for clearance, in parentheses, Little specific information is available. Low frequency radar, parentheses, LFR, parentheses, 
offered a very small electromagnetic signature and low profile while providing parentheses, through classified signal processing algorithms and parentheses, a high level of integrity of data. In certain conditions, LFR could provide near daylight quality images. Snazzy. Okay, so that's some, some kind of technology that's uh, being employed. Um, history? I feel like we've more or less caught up with history. I don't know if anything's gonna, if anything of any uh, significance is gonna end up here again. Yeah. We're kind of up to the moment, but the moment is, is dragging its heels some more. Let's crack into the military database again. Battle map, stroke Ross, parentheses AEF action. All right, give me some action map. Here we go, look at that action map. That looks like the exact same image of chunks of ice that we've seen before, how exciting. Damage to the hollow projection relays has made images of the AEF landing of the Ross ice shelf of low resolution and limited effectiveness. Poor satellite coverage of Antarctica is a contributing factor as well. Um, okay. Um, yeah, it wasn't really like a, a 3D uh, interactive battle map as advertised really, was it? It was kind of a low, low resolution bit of pixel art. But never mind. Let's have a look for the next character we need to read about, who is Sarah Chan. Let's find out about Sarah. Sarah, assigned female, uh, born on the 5th of September 2041 in Springfield. Let's have a look at Sarah's blood pressure. Um, there you go. Uh, and temperature. There we are. Respiration and GSR. Heart rate and EEG. Tension. There. DNA and hormones. Oh, up and down. Uh, neurotransmitters. One up, one down. Glycogen M. There. Okay. So that's that part for Sarah. Uh, let's check in with geography. Um, because if Peter was heading off into the unknown, that might be a good place to look. Uh, not this moment, apparently. Uh, Wasatch, then. We'll look up the Chan in Wasatch. Family tree. Okay, Sarah Chan is the child of Paula Chan and Jules Chan. Jules Chan is the child of Edward Chan and Anna Chan, and Paula Chan is the child of James Wilson and Susan Wilson. Interesting, so um, I'd say pretty much all of these family trees have followed a patronymic uh, naming convention, but uh, not the case with Paula Chan, who shares a different surname to... Oh no, I was getting confused because Paula Chan married Jules Chan took Jules Chan's name, and then they had, yeah, no, I just confused myself there. Uh, entrenched uh, patronymic uh, name conventions there. So physiology and ESP chart there. Basic core IQ. There. And we'll come back here. And then we'll head into psychology and we'll do a little bit more of Sarah's stats. There you are. We're going through them. 
I mean, at the rate the story is currently unfolding, we'll have plenty of time to read about all these characters. Uh, so the emotional evaluation for Sarah is is like this. Uh, personal growth is like this. Highly introverted, apparently. Uh, basic core IQ is like this. There you go. Okay, central processing. Uh, might be more field reports. Maybe um, find out something about uh... no Lieutenant Skate. Not gonna, not gonna figure there. Okay. Yeah. What was that little vignette about? Is that I don't know. I don't. Know. I'm not gonna try to second guess it. We've come too far. I've seen too much. Or perhaps not enough. Uh, Sarah Chan. Here we go. So, last set of stats for Sarah. We'll have a look at social adjustment first, and we'll go anti clockwise from there. So, that's uh, those uh, things assessed. Evaluation of memory is like this. Uh, last set of basic core IQ categories have been enumerated thusly, and logic is recorded as being like this. There you go. Okay, so that was, uh, there wasn't too much to read there, so quickly back to home. Now let's see if anything has unlocked since our last visit. Oh yeah, but two, but they're back in the past, I think. If the, the sequence of events can be trusted, which I am I'm not entirely sure it can. Okay, read and say below. Protector Regent Sable called a retreat. It was inevitable as soon as he saw their position. But as it turned out, retreat was not possible. Eighteen regiments of crack ENC troops were trapped in an ice floe the size of a, a county. When he tried to fall back to the transports, he discovered they were isolated on their own floe which by now had drifted several miles out to sea, pushing an enormous mass of pack ice before it. He could have stood on the edge and looked across at his transportation, but there was no way at all to get there. Until and unless the ice froze up between the two flows, they were separated by a gulf of black and ice-cold water hundreds of fathoms deep. The APCs would not work on water. One of them was already down there somewhere, with all its men aboard. They would never rot. In a thousand years someone could go down there and pull them out, looking just as they did right now. The currents were carrying them very slowly northward, toward the Antarctic Convergence, where warmer ocean water would eventually melt the flows. They would be rescued long before that, of course, but that an invasion force of 16,000 men would need rescuing from the ice was the bitterest irony of all. Regent Sable suddenly felt very weary. He had a feeling the ice was not going to freeze up between the flows. He suspected they would be living here for quite a while. Wave 1 had been a fiasco. He suspected the waves 2 and 3 would be the same. Interesting, so... That invasion part has been taken out of the equation of what's going on? Let's see. Commander Agano frowned at his display. Halt! He bellowed suddenly. Halt the whole damn convoy! Now what is it, Commander? The lead vehicle just fell off the display protector. What? It's off the display. It's down. What do you mean down? There isn't any down. We're still on solid ice. This is winter. This ice is solid. You know that. Yes, protector. The ice is still solid underneath us. But take a look. The ice is no longer attached to the land. Oh, okay. But, but that should come before the bit where they said they retreated. So once again, duplication of information. Not in chronological order. Alright, another region of Sable segment. A call came through two days later. Thatcher smiled dryly out of the hollow image. 
I seem to be considered some sort of expert on Intercorp down here, Protect the Sable. I'm not, of course. That is, uh, there are plenty of others who could do this job. I'm sorry about the men you lost. It was not our plan to kill anyone, and we've tried to keep casualties to a minimum. Where's Devor? Sable demanded. Gone, Protector. Quite gone. A few of your units got in, uh, some at Drishnaya, uh, a couple over at Amory. Two of those units are following their orders to pursue. We've lost track of them temporarily, but come day we'll find them. I doubt they'll long survive long, though. Day up there is still four months away, and they are neither adapted nor equipped to survive. I'm sorry. So am I, Sable said. So am I. This will be a disaster for the entire human race. Thatcher nodded. Perhaps, he agreed. Of course, it could be something quite different from a disaster. It could be a great opportunity, Protector. The risk is too great, Sable said. I fear for us all. No one has the right to make such a decision on his own. Well, we can't let fear rule us, can we? Thatcher was grave and sympathetic, but unmoved by argument. Peter and the others will either get through or they will not. Frankly, I wish I were with them, whatever, wherever they are now. They have the future. Oh. Uh, that ended more abruptly than I anticipated. Uh, and that's it. They have the future. Cliffhanger time for the end of the episode. Okay, well, at least that seems like Peter DeVore is on his way to the possibly fictitious uh, temperate zone of Antarctica called Terminus in order to put together a plan to migrate the human species outside of its physical form uh, using technology and power source not really yet readily identified. Hooray! Okay, I, I must remember to save the game. Let's save the game. Oh, sorry, I was a bit too quick for you there, wasn't I? Save it. There we go. Thank you very much for joining me, everybody. I hope you're uh, enjoying our uncovering the continuing uh, narrative of Peter DeVore and this um, unlikely future world um, of Portal. Um, how close we are to the uh, creation of an actual portal, I, I wouldn't like to speculate, given uh, given how long we've been um, interacting with this. Um, but I I'm going to keep on going. By golly, uh, if I put this much uh, time and time and effort into it, I want to see the end. I want to want to know how this ends. I want to know if there's any surprises for us in uh, in format, or whether it will just I don't know. Homer will just say the end as one of the entries i don't know but if you'd like to find out what occurs next please do join us next time for another episode of let's play portal until then take care bye bye <laughs>